Hello, everybody. We are going to see the presentation of OMS uh, at FPGA and the Defiant integration. We will go over an OMS application uh, with the uh, ID on Eclipse. The, the applications that we will demonstrate are compiled with Mercurium, Auto IAT, and the Defiant HLS. They go through um, FPGA synthesis in order to get the bitstream for the FPGA. Everything runs on the Nanos runtime and everything uh, is uh, executed on a Com Express board that we have in the Rex master system in Bierfeld. So let's start with the Eclipse plugin. As you know, Shilinx uh, distributed last year the BTS environment and this is based on Eclipse. So we installed the OMS autocompletion features on that version of Eclipse. Uh, it is pretty compatible, so we did not do any changes on the plugin. That provides with control space the different options that I have in order to uh, use that as a directive, along with some uh, help that appears here, helping the programmer in order to insert the different directives and clauses. For instance, here in gets uh, also explained it and in out okay we also did the completion of the um, hls directives for instance array partition and we refer to the uh, shellings documentation if the programmer needs more information so uh, this project has been actually compiled here okay going through mercurium as you can see in the moving listing and then ait starts the uh, and, uh, um, the code generation for the FPGA, uh, transferring the, the code for the FPGA to the HLS uh, environment, Vivado HLS, and then Vivado. And at the end, you get a final bitstream generated here. Okay. So the applications that we are compiling on uh, this server are then just secure copy to the BLFL machine. And this is the BLFL board, uh, it uh, consists of two ARM cores and the FPGA. We have already loaded matrix multiplication with two instances of uh, matrix multiplication with floating point numbers. It's two, in two instances of 128 by 128. So here I can execute the application, for instance, of matrices of 1000 by 1000 with one accelerator and we get uh, something close to nine gigaflops, 8.8. .8. I can add a second accelerator, and then I can get a little bit more of, of performance, 9.62. Uh, you see also that the applications validate themselves. Okay, then we can go to the integer version of the same uh, application, matrix, matmul in integer. Okay, and here we have the defiant version. Okay, so this version has been partially generated, the kernel itself has been generated with Defiant. Okay, so I load the bitstream. That would be this file here. And then I can execute. Uh, in that case, the matrix mm, block is only 16 by 16 elements. So I'm going to run a smaller matrices because the, the overhead, in fact, is uh, a little high. Uh, for instance, if I do the execution, in, the, in that case, we only have one uh, block. So we get uh, 0.03, like integer, uh, giga integer operations per second. Okay. And uh, I can compare that with the version that we got. Uh, so load bitstream, the version that we got. Uh, just using plain ohms, which is this one here. Okay. Uh, and I do the same kind of execution. Okay. And uh, you will see that the execution time is pretty much the same. Uh, this is mostly because uh, the overhead is uh, on the management of the tasks because the tasks are very, are very small. Okay. I can run smaller matrices and you will see actually that the execution time and gets a little bit reduced, so from 0 0.9 to 0 0.1, okay? And the performance uh, is actually uh, very similar, okay? So what happens here, I, I have obtained a few traces. So this is showing the instrumented version of the OMS uh, version, okay? Um, and we see the two uh, ARM cores, uh, 
creating task, managing the FPGA, and here we see the execution of the on the FPGA. Okay, and here we see in fact the data transfers to the FPGA. On the right side, we have the um, defiant version. In this version, we don't have the internal instrumentation, so we only see the top-level view. As you can see, the um, uh, the shape is very very similar. The application, in fact, does a first warm-up of the uh, matrix multiplication, doing one matrix multiplication, and then it does a, a second execution. This is why, in the first case, we are need we need to transfer the data from the main memory to the memory of the FPGA. And on the, on the second version, this, is, this doesn't happen, but we actually do the transfers from the memory of the FPGA to the VRAMs, okay? So here, in fact, you can see the um, number of tasks that are being executed on the FPGA. <clears throat> As you can see, they grow <clears throat> up to a point where we start the second matrix multiplication, okay? Um, if we look into the details a little bit, okay, in fact, we can see that the executions are pretty similar, okay? So if I just copy the properties of this window and I put them here, paste, I put the duration, which is actually what is interesting to see that the execution is pretty much the same. Here, we don't have this third row, which is actually the um, execution on the FPGA, okay? If I just zoom to these ones, I see that I have a very small uh, portion uh, of the execution, which is uh, two, um, two, dot, two dot half microseconds, which is the data coming into the VRAMs. Then I have here the execution of the kernel, 182 microseconds, and then I have, I'm going to zoom this, I have here a final copy out from the VRAMs to the uh, FPGA memory of 0 0.71 uh, uh, microseconds. In the uh, defiant case, I imagine that uh, the internal execution should be very, very similar, okay? Um, uh, so probably the kernel is, is actually uh, uh, getting uh, similar performance, but as we don't have the internal instrumentation, we cannot actually uh, say that at this point, okay? So, the other thing that I wanted to, de to demonstrate is here. Uh, so the same environment is currently running also on a, a, an Intel box with an Alveo card. So you can see here that I have matrix multiplication uh, loaded on, the, on that machine. Uh, the machine uh, is, a, is this Intel box uh, and the Alveo card is connected through PCI Express and we use the Shilin's QDMA driver in order to do the same type of executions as we do here. And um, uh, I have to say also that uh, the development of the PCI Express support has been done in the EuroExa project. So the two projects have contributed on this particular uh, execution that I'm going to do. So here I can multiply, for instance, matrices of 2048. Uh, and I will do uh, checking, I will do one thread, and I will do one accelerator in the FPGA, and I will get these 66 gigaflops. This is, out, this is coming out from the execution on, on one accelerator in the FPGA. Uh, the accelerator here is bigger, it's 256 by 256 elements. If I put two accelerators, I get 120 gigaflops. If I put three accelerators, I get 160 gigaflops. I think this is uh, a good uh, result also that is in fact combined from uh, Legato and Eurohexa. I have to say also that we have also tried uh, Defiant on this Alveo uh, machine and uh, it works successfully. And with this, I finish my presentation. Thanks for your attention. <laughs>